Good afternoon, everyone. Just a reminder, please, if you could mute all mobile devices. Also, you'll see an envelope on the pews for the Good Friday collection for the holy places in the Holy Land. And we'll have that towards the end of the ceremony. If you'd like to stand. Let us kneel. Let's stand. Remember your mercies, Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery and who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him and kings stand speechless before him for they shall see something never told and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard and to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling who grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God, and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. 
harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our fault struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, so he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his suffering shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence I will grant the whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering, but having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient for us even to death, dying on the cross. Therefore, God raised him on high and gave him a name above all other names. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there, and he went into it with his disciples. Judas, the traitor, knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there. And he brought the cohort to this place, together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas, the traitor, was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, Let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace. But Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid, on duty at the door, said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold. And the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. 
the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I have said, point it out. But if there is no offence in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once the cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, we are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him. But according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some th thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came out again and said to them, Look, I'm going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We have a law, and according to the law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you. Jesus replied, 
you would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself a king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They said, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So in the end, Pilate handed them, him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So the chief priests said to Pilate, You should not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them, they cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clophas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, this is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. So instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth, 
and he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all of this happened to fulfill the words of scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at the, in the night time. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. Let us allow the words of the gospel to speak to us in our hearts. Let's have an extended period of silence as God's word challenges each and every one of us to walk in the footsteps of the Lord. Let us stand now for the solemn intercessions of our church. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord may be pleased to give the church peace, to guard us all and to unite us throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Almighty Father. Almighty ever-living God, in Christ you revealed your glory to all the nations. Watch over the works of your mercy so that your church spread throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name and this we ask through Christ our Lord. So let us pray also for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church, governing the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, so that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of our faith, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us pray, friends, also for our Bishop Vincent, 
for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people of God. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, so that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. We pray for those preparing for baptism, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, so that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, you make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of catechumens so that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our sisters and brothers who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, you gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your son, so that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of love. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that the Lord may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, you bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants. Graciously hear the prayers of your church so that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in this world. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, you created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of everyone. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favour on those who govern with authority over us in this world, so that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples and the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. We pray finally, my friends, to God the Almighty Father, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, 
banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant to travelers safety, to pilgrims re good return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, so that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us stand. Behold, behold the wood of the cross on which is hung our salvation. Oh, come, let us adore. Behold, behold the wood of the cross on which is hung our salvation. Behold, behold the wood of the cross on which is hung our salvation. And so, my friends, we will now adore the cross and venerate. Uh, we still are not able to kiss it due to various diseases, but feel free to bow, genuflect, touch the cross, and we have hand cleanser as you leave.
Let us stand. We pray now the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, so that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. be a minister up the back as well.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, so that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few moments. We'll now take up the collection for the holy places in the Holy Land. As you know, this will ultimately get to the Franciscan order that has the uh, responsibility of keeping all our sacred and holy places going in the Holy Land. And uh, the Christian people certainly in uh, Israel and Palestine are getting less and less due to various difficulties. So we need to pray for them as well. So let's take up this collection. There are envelopes on your seats if you'd prefer to put something in that. And again, I thank you. I often say that our liturgy speaks volumes in itself. And I think of all our liturgies, the liturgy of Good Friday does just that. However, for those of us like me who have a bad knee, it's not exactly the favorite for standing. Let us stand. We bow down for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. And this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.